Yeah. So, so if a person's finding themselves in a relationship, whether it's marriage, dating, whatever, um, how can they actually communicate effectively to their partner about this stuff? Because a lot of times, you know, when, when stress hits and triggers, you know, what, what do they say in psychology that sometimes you go back to your adaptive child, meaning like when you're a kid and you went through stress, you found a way to survive through that. You know, maybe it was by controlling a situation, maybe by withdrawing from the situation, maybe by attacking the person. Like you had some go-to that you went to for conflict resolution. And nine times out of 10, it's not the best solution because you weren't sure. watching the best solution. So if a person finds themselves in a situation now, whether it's in a marriage and they just want to, I just want to know how to communicate better with my spouse. So they're actually hearing what I'm saying. I know you've studied the writings of St. John Paul II, any insights he might give on just how to effectively communicate with your husband, your wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. So yeah. First point is that it goes back to that childhood wound, like you were talking about before with Conrad Bars. And it's, you know, we get stuck in that place where mom and dad are the creator. So we're unsafe unless they validate us. We have to grow and mature with our faith to realize that actually there's a creator who's bigger than mom and dad. So we're actually safe. Even if we feel invalidated, we believe by faith that we're actually safe. Okay. So if that's true, then we can learn a different way to relate. We can branch out beyond our childhood mannerisms and methods. And so the right way to communicate, and we've all heard this before, but I want to ground this a little bit more deeply, is there are two roles to communication. There's the speaker and the listener. But this is actually how God created us in his image based on Trinitarian communion. There's giving and receiving. And we're used to this if we know theology of the body. So the giving has to be received. The receiving is in, se in a sense a gift. And then there's actually in between man and woman, a sharing of roles, a switching of roles. So in communication, you're either the speaker or you're the listener. And you have to know which mode you're in because we're in space and time. We don't do things eternally and infinitely the way God does. We have to know, OK, for these next five minutes, I'm in the listening role. And when we're in the listening role, we have to be listening not only with our mouth not talking, but with our minds. And we're so good, we can be good at closing our mouths and letting the other person speak because I'm listening, but we're actually thinking over the other person. We're, we're formulating a rebuttal. We're already, we're like, I already know, okay, that's wrong. You you misremembered this. That's okay. incorrect. This is how I'm going to prove my point. All right, just go ahead. You Are you done quiet. yet? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So in that back and forth, in that ebb and flow, there have to be these crystallized roles of communication. And then when you're listening, John Paul II talks about this in Love and Responsibility. Around page 200, he has a section, short section on tenderness. And what he talks about is to enter into the world of another person is what tenderness is. But not just that, because that's empathy. Empathy is to put yourself in another person's shoes, which is important. But there's a second step which makes it tenderness. And tenderness is to make the other person know that you're putting yourself in his or her shoes. How do you do that? Through your words. So listening is not just keeping your mouth shut. Listening sometimes is talking, but the things you're saying are indicating that you're understanding what the other person is saying. That's still listening. So then we hear these phrases like you might say to somebody, it sounds like what you're saying is you feel upset because X, Y, Z. That's, that's incredibly important. It's not enough for you to just have it in your head. No, I know what she's saying. I know where she's going with this. I know how she feels, blah, blah, blah. But you lock that inside your own brain. That's never going to build a bridge. Tenderness is when you put it into words. Even if it's a hundred times that it's been said before, you feel really neglected right now because I didn't recognize that this is what you wanted. That's how you feel. You don't have to agree with it. You could completely disagree with it. We're not talking about your feelings right now. You're talking about the other person's feelings. And then when the other person hears that, it lowers anxiety, it increases affiliation and friendship, and you join together in a sense of unity that is impossible without that tenderness. And you can have a half hour, I say it like this, you can have a half hour of conversation where you have 15 minutes, each person trying to make your own point and walk away totally enemies. Or you can have a half hour talking, still remain divided on agreeing on the issue, but 15 minutes spent, two people understanding one side, 
and the other 15 minutes, two people spent understanding the other side. And you walk away a half hour later feeling together and unified because of how you spent that half hour. And you might still totally disagree with each other, but you walk away closer. So this is the dimension of creating unity in our diversity and our in our differences and being able to come together through communication. I think this is great to hear, especially from a man's perspective, because, I mean, we're not always the best listeners. Uh, you know, I've had my wife tell me, like, you know, Jason, you're not a really good listener. And I, I've told her, like, I'm a motivational speaker, not a motivational <laughs> listener. And I, yeah, obviously, she thought that was very funny and witty on my part. Um, but, you know, it's not something we're great at. You know, we're sometimes like, Jason, are you listening to me? And like my ass, like I can, you know, I can tell you're speaking. Like I'm, I'm aware you're speaking, but so different than listening. And I think from a guy's speaking, when men tend to communicate, it's like to exchange information back and forth, right. you know, point to point. Like, oh, right. I think the Brooklyn Nets are great. Why? Well, yeah, KD's great, but like you guys don't have defense. Lakers are going to beat you in the finals. Well, I think that you know, and it's just information wars. So, you right. know, whereas you know, authentic listening is so different. Like when a man has a problem. Typically, we go to someone for a solution, right? Like, okay, you know, my tires are wobbling. You know, maybe it needs to be realigned or tire rotation. Imagine you go to like Toyota and say, hey, yeah, you, my tire has been wobbling. I think I need my toy tires rotated. And the guy says to you, that must be really hard. <laughs> like, well, well, yeah, it is. And I'll bet that makes you feel front. Yeah, it, it, you, you change the tires, man. Like, I don't want your sympathy. I want a solution. And so I think a lot of times we take that into the relationships, like, okay, she's presenting me with a problem. It's like that. You've probably seen that nail in the head video that uh, they've got it. on I YouTube. For those of you who yeah. haven't seen this, I want you to Google, you know, lady with a nail in her head video communication. It's right. this lady where she's sitting there talking to like her husband on the couch. And she's like, I just have this ache in my head and it won't get away. And all my sweaters are getting snagged. And I just this throbbing pain. And the husband's there like, it might... It, you know, it might be the, the nail coming out of your forehead. She's like, it's not <laughs> say, the nail. Uh, nail like, how, yeah, yeah, she's got physically a nail coming out of her forehead. And she's like, you always want to solve things. He's like, but I really think if we could just get that out, like, why do you, why, why would you just listen? And then at the end, he's like, that must be really hard. And she said, thank you. <laughs> it's just like to a man's brain. It's like, dude, that's what she wants. All right. But, but, but we're not going to get thing. anywhere. Like, this is, this is what I say. I, I do this with men all the time because that's the initial impression but then if you learn these steps and you get the program and you get the instruction manual for how to effectively communicate, it actually turns out that men are oftentimes better communicators than women, than women, because men can compartmentalize and they can actually step into the other person's world and leave their own feelings behind easier then a woman will find because of the way her brain is mapped. Mm -hmm. So once a man gets over that initial hurdle of realizing like, no, this is the way. And it's like, you know, it's like, I'm going to build a, a shed. I need my instructions. Like, tell me step one, two, three, four. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, man, step one, close your mouth. Okay. Step two, close your mind to your own thinking. Okay. I think I got that. Okay. Step three, try to imagine what she's actually feeling. Like, okay, you know, it's like <laughs> caveman, like, got it. <laughs> but men can be really good at it. Yeah. We just have to learn that that's what we're supposed to do. Realizing, like, I tell men this too, like, you didn't marry a man. There's, like, there's a good reason for that. Like, this is a woman, again, going back to, like, understanding brains, the brain differences here are so radical. And once you get that, it's like, we, we think we want to, ha to communicate with somebody who's the same as us. But that's actually, you know, that's what's missing in homosexuality. It's like you're only getting the same thing as what you are. That's ultimately not going to actually be fulfilling. But you, you married somebody who's entirely other than you. So that means you're learning a whole entirely different way to communicate. Once you get that, and, especially, and it's the same for women, all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay. And I, actually, I shouldn't be resentful about that. Like, this is the beauty of the other. And reverencing the differences and accepting these differences and then growing towards unity through the differences is actually God's original plan. Before the garden, before the fall in the garden, before the fig leaves created the separation, we had to hide and then doubt the differences and be suspicious of the other and then form resentments. We were meant to actually accept with full view, full vision of the full nakedness of the other person with reverence and awe and desire for communion through those differences. 
So this is as real today as it was in the garden. And so today we need to take down the leaves and realize like, oh, you're a woman. You're different than me. So you're not going to just need to fix it. You want to talk about emotion. Your brain is built that way. And for a woman to say that about her man, your brain's not the same as me. Thank God I don't just have a spouse that I'm just going to go, you know, talk for hours about the emotion of it. That's like being married to a woman. I signed up for something different than that. And there's yeah. beauty in that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and thus the importance of having male female friendships, you know, where a wife can have girlfriends that can be her girlfriends. Oh, instead yeah. Of expecting the husband to be a male girlfriend. You know, right. granted, we could learn some of these skills. I remember working years ago, I worked at Catholic Answers and there was one guy in the office in leadership. I think he was the vice president at the time, um, but he was so good at listening. And mm. it was evident in any like board meeting, we're all in there talking, you know, like you'd say a point and he'd say, okay, what I hear you saying is da, 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 da. And he would just bullet point what you just said. And there was just like this relief instantaneously of like, he got it, he heard it. I, I'm, And it just made you so much want to be part of the team, knowing that someone's actually repeating something back to you, yeah. even if they might disagree with three out of the four points. And I think, I don't know about you, but I get locked into kind of fact checker mode. You know, when my, my wife and I are getting into something, I'm like, well, you know, that, that is erroneous. And this one is not nuanced properly and just get so hung up yeah. and kind of point in, in, in a defensive posture that you, you, you know, you can't receive anything when you're playing defense. You know? And, you know, this is a beautiful part of also our humanity. We're created for this unity. And Pope Benedict talks about this, that we're made for this communion and the development of the personality through receptivity of the other. So it's the ma masculine feminine genius. When we talk about those as two separate things are actually meant to be received and given to each other so that each of us becomes a better version of ourselves. So that man in the office probably had a really good relationship with his mom. Because as starting from childhood, he's receiving her feminine genius and he's being formed to be a better man, not less of a man, but a better man by becoming, I don't like this word at all, but by, re, I'm not going to say feminized, but by receiving some of her feminine genius, when we receive a gift that should change us and by receiving that gift of the other, when it's the opposite sex, it changes us, we become better. And so that's why Older married couples become hopefully better versions of themselves and women become a little more compartmentalized. Men become a little bit more empathic and connected in unity with other humans, caring more about what other people feel. This is natural human development. This is how God made us. And we need to not only accept our differences, but reverence them for being the path towards our own sanctification.